Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and this is Robin. Robin is from Kind Minded YXE. Did, yes? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure. So <laughs> she is on Instagram mostly and your platform consists of plant care, LGBTQ2+, just being kind. Awareness and just being kind. And if you are in the Saskatoon area, she does do plant giveaways. So I highly recommend you go give her a follow. I will leave her link to Instagram down in the comment section below. You'll enjoy her page. She's much better at taking photos than I am. And uh, content wise, she's much more on point. Mine's just kind of scattered. Oh, I take a lot of your photos for you. Yeah, that's yeah, actually <laughs> true story. <laughs> a lot of thumbnails, a lot of photos on Instagram are all done by Robin here. So she's here to help me film close up some of my flowers because you guys there is a myth i guess you could say going around in the influencer world currently where we're looking at tomato flowers and putting things like vibrating toothbrushes or shaking and all that stuff and i want to show you why that doesn't really matter especially when we're talking about tomato plants so robin's going to jump behind the camera and be my expert videographer now photographer <laughs> and videographer we got a double doozy uh, and let's just jump right into it okay so we're here in front of our wonderful tomato plants and a really common misconception which i did mention in a short earlier is that you have to shake your tomato flowers in order to get them to pollinate this is not the case. Tomato flowers are very unique in the fact that they are 94% self-pollinated. They're actually very similar to wheat or grass in that sense. Grass and wheat is a little bit higher, 99% self-pollinated. However, I thought it was interesting because if it's self-pollinated, you're probably wondering, well, how do you make a viable cross? Like how would you cross two tomatoes together? And let me show you exactly how to do this. I used to do this with a company that was doing hybrid wheat braiding and it involves tweezers and a keen eye and a little bit of dissection. So Robin's gonna zoom in on these flowers here and I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. So these flowers up here, if you look, there's like this little pedestal. Inside of this is where your male and female parts are. So what you can do is you can actually take a pair of tweezers and pull back this center cone. Go into this here. You can actually pull back this center cone and inside we will see, and I'm not sure if you can actually see that on camera. Maybe I'll have to move my hand so you can see it. So if we can go inside, we can see this little tiny green thing sticking out. And this is actually the female portion of the plant. So if we go a bit lower into the plant, we eventually hit this ball type um, item. And this would be kind of the uterus, I guess you could say, of the plant itself. And that's where this green stem leads to. But if you notice the top of the green stem is circular and it kind of has a microscopic hole. So if I was to put this under a microscope, you'd see a little hole and there's actually a tube that goes down. And inside of here, we can pull off part of this tube or this side and we can see these tiny little filaments. Let me know if you want me to stop ever so you can get a shot. So you can see these tiny little filaments in here and on that there's like a powder. And that powder is what you're going to use to cross pollinate. So what you wanna do if you want to do a hybrid tomato and make your own variety is you would actually rip off the entire outside tube. So that entire pollen area, so this, um, this entire area so that just this stem, this green stem was present. So I'm just gonna rip off the other side to show you what the final result would be. So this is what your final result would be. It would look very simply like this. And what would you would do from here is you would then go to a different variety of tomato plant and you would actually grab the rest of these male parts. You'd wanna clean off your tweezers so you're not mixing pollen, wash your hands. You can see there's pollen all over my hands now. Wash your hands, get rid of everything and get the 
yellow pollen area that has this powder on it. And then you would bring over this portion from your other tomato plant that you have, and you would bring it back over to your lovely female that you've now dissected into pieces that only has this green pollen tube. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna simply rub it right on this little stem. And now you're officially having plant sex in your backyard. YouTube, mm. don't ban me here. Please don't censor me. And you're just going to rub the pollen kind of on this reciprocal area. And on here, there's lots of little hairs. Sometimes there's, um, you know, a little bit of liquid that's extruded. And then that is what where your pollen's going to go. It's going to go down this tube and it's eventually going to end up in basically that uterus that we're talking about, that ovary at the bottom of the flower, and you officially have a cross. And this is important. If you want a tomato cross, you do need to do this because remember, 94% of your tomato um, genetics, the seeds inside, are going to be true to the parent. So a beefsteak will always be a beefsteak, unless, of course, you cross pollinate it with something else so maybe you do a, a beef steak with a cherry tomato or you do a, a green lime zebra with a beef steak you name it you guys have to let me know in the comments down below what crosses you are officially going to try this summer this is an extra nerdy video we got super plant nerd ish in here but that's good that's okay if you guys enjoy these more science in-depth based not shaking plants or putting vibrating toothbrushes on them, but actually looking at how to pollinate a plant, then let me know in the comments down below and I will continue to make those. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, tap a, that subscribe button, and make sure you go find Robin over on Instagram. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.